Today in Michigan Magazine, we encounter an adventure in culinary curiosity as we experience tastes of the Far East. From Michigan Magazine cooking enthusiast, Diana Erickson of Mayo, Michigan. On this edition, we visit the kitchen of Diana as she shares with us some of the recipes she contributed to our Michigan Magazine Family and Friends Cookbook number three. So get a paper and pencil and get ready to explore some Japanese and Vietnamese delicacies. Or grab your cookbook number three and turn to pages 22 and 23 and follow along. Diana, what's on today's menu? The first recipe was steamed wontons and mm -hmm. it came from a buffet one time when I was at work. Um, one of the gentlemen from Japan brought in these steamed wontons and we all loved them. And so he put the recipe together for us and he called them those stuffed thingies. Stuffed thingies. Yes. <laughs> but the official word, the, 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 the correct stuffed thingies is what? Is a steamed wonton. Steamed wonton. And the nationality is the one again? Japan. Japan. Okay. And the next thing is? The next thing I'm going to make is spring rolls from Vietnam. A okay. lot of people think of those as being egg rolls, but the difference between a spring roll and an egg roll is that it uses rice paper and it's real light and delicate. Yeah. And unlike Japanese egg rolls where there's a lot of vegetables and hardly any meat, the predominant ingredient in this is ground pork. I see. So what should we prepare first here today? Well, actually, we're going to start with the steamed wontons because those will sit on the steamer while we're preparing the spring rolls. Okay, let's go over basically the ingredients first of all. Okay, in steamed wontons, you need a package of wonton skins. Okay. You get them in your produce department. Okay, at your favorite supermarket. At your favorite supermarket. And, and they're called one-ton wrappers. Yep, okay. and they're real readily available, and they kind of look like egg roll skins. Oh, look at there. But they're square. Ah, if you really want to get into it, you can do your own. But we suggest, if you want to appreciate it a little more and uh, have the time, time to do it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that was amazing. So. You can get, okay. Okay, and then you need a pound of ground pork, and that pork sausage, but just plain old ground pork, mm -hmm. like you okay. get at your grocery store. Okay, one ton wrappers and ground pork. Okay. You can add some shri some shrimp in there. That's mm -hmm. an optional thing. Some people, you know, have shellfish allergies, so that's not a big deal. Okay. Take a can of water chestnuts. All oh, those are some of my favorites because they're so crunchy. And they're that's good. right. Chop them up and put them in there. Okay. We'll add a little water. Okay. A little cornstarch. All right. We we'll get these in line here and kind of. And some pepper. Pepper. Right. Oh, Fresh right ground? Fresh ground. <laughs> only, right. only kind to have. Yes. Um, some sugar. Sugar? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And one egg. Wonton wrappers, some mm. some uh, uh, ground pork, I should say, some chestnuts, and, mm. and uh, all the other goodies here, which, of course, will be in our Michigan Magazine cookbook number three. So if you don't get it as we're going along here today, you can, of course, uh, get in our cookbook. You just take your fresh pork, and this is um, roughly a pound. So. Okay. A pound of fresh ground pork. And Alrighty. you, if you want, put the shrimp, you'll put the shrimp in right now. So the meat products you to kind of mix together or something? Right, you'll mix okay. them all together all right. so they're nicely blended. Mm-hmm. Otter chestnuts drained and And then rinsed. we'll chop them. Okay. You know, the best thing about a, a chestnut, a water chestnut, is just the texture. It just it adds a lot to right. it. Right. There's not a lot of flavor to mm -hmm. it. Even when you buy, like, the fresh ones mm -hmm. in the market, um, it's the texture that they add to mm -hmm. um, your meal. Yeah. And they don't have to be real finely chopped, so you want to have some some texture when you get there. You chop them too finely. Uh -huh. to okay. Much. Add to the meat mixture. Add that to the meat mixture. Some green onion. You've did this before, I can tell. It's uh, cooking is one of my three main hobbies. Really? So, yes. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, nationality, or is it just out? Um, you know, in the air? it there is no favorite nationality. Yeah. It's the fact that I don't have to eat the same thing yeah. three or four times a year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of an adventure, and and I yes. invite friends over who are willing to try things, knowing that. It might be an ingredient that if I told them what it was, they wouldn't eat it. They wouldn't eat it, but they'll eat it, and then, then they'll you can be tell glad them to surprise. hear. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah, adventure eating. Adventure eating. Okay, I'm going to add just um, a little bit of um, soy sauce, and it's kind of like when you make meatloaf, yep. enough to kind of hold it together. Like think of it like ketchup type mm -hmm. of thing. Okay. Um, some pepper. Freshly ground. Mm. And there's nothing like freshly ground pepper. You bet. Cornstarch kind of serves the same purpose in your meatloaf mm -hmm. as a thickener. Okay. Kind of bind it all together. A couple of tablespoons of sugar and it just adds kind of like in your spaghetti sauce. It uh -huh. kind of wakes up the flavor mm -hmm. and that's what that does in here. And you're experimenting with foods. Have you run across one that you rather 
uh, not try again or is it just uh, yes. one that, yes what was that just uh, was um it was favorite? ethiopian uh -huh. and the bread was more like um a dried cellulose sponge oh. and after eating it i thought I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fun it was interesting but no i wouldn't try that yeah. one again yeah and you know part of it is developed taste um yeah. you know opening up your palate and um it's a lot of times that people eat um for example, Chinese food, and they say, I really don't care for Chinese food. Sometimes if you eat in a different restaurant prepared by a different family, it's a little more, um, I don't say authentic to their region or to their family. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like meatloaf, you know, nobody makes meatloaf like your mom does. Right, right, right. And that's the same thing with ethnic food, I think, oh, yes. is that um, you kind of try it and see what happens. There's not too many ethnic food tastes that I haven't uh, really enjoyed one way or the other. But uh, well, you added an egg there? Was I it? added you, an egg you here. You beat it up, beat the egg up. Yep, mm. and now it kind of looks like your all-American meatloaf. Yeah. Don't be afraid to get in there with your hands. No. Nope. best way to do things sometimes. It is. It is. You get it all mixed, and you can feel it. When you feel it, you kind of feel a little bit of the texture all over. Uh-huh. It looks like Look egg. Look at that. Yep. It looks okay. like your American meatloaf. Okay, so I'm going to wash off my hands. All right. The cooking of the steamed wontons is best in a bamboo steamer placed over a boiling pot of water, which she prepared before encasing the meat mixture into the small square wonton wrappers and pinching the end with dampened fingers. Diana told us she preferred spraying the bottom with a vegetable spray, then lining it with leaf lettuce. This assures a non-stick experience. Cooking time, about 20 minutes. So uh, your husband and you are fairly new to the area, aren't you? Um, we've been in the Mayo area only three years. Uh -huh. so, um, well, welcome to the great uh, northern part of the state of Michigan. Oh, we're having a wonderful time oh, here. Oh, it, it looks like it. As a matter of fact, you, your husband is what, from uh, Minnesota? From Minnesota. And you are from the great state of Illinois? I or? sure am, from the Prairie State. My husband works for the Forest Service, and so we get to travel um, where it takes us. Ah, uh, yes. And, um, and so it also kind of exposes us to even different regional cookings. Right. Um, we lived out in Colorado um, in the area of ranches and buffalo and uh -huh. elk and all that kind of stuff. The morning with Diana was truly turning into an adventure in cooking. Next up, while the wontons were cooking, deep fried Vietnamese spring rolls. Ingredients? Rice noodles or cellophane noodles. And cellophane noodles are bean thread and rice noodles look like this. They're made with rice. Um, they cook up clear. It has an egg. Once again, it has ground pork. Um, we have shredded carrots in it. We have um, an onion in it. We have something called fish sauce, which is um, very common in um, Pacific Rim type of cooking. It's, it's based on anchovies, um, but you don't want to leave it out because it doesn't turn it into fishy tasting, but it is, does impart something in it. Pepper, green onions again, and then um, the Vietnamese actually use something called rice paper. This is rice paper. It's thin, it's rice, it's dried on bamboo like yay. And it feels kind of like paper. I mean, it really does feel like paper. If you can't find this, you can use egg roll wrappers. But egg roll wrappers, I'll roll some and egg roll wrappers, are zillions times thicker. Um, I got these down in an Asian market in Saginaw. Well, with ingredients in hand, you take those noodles and you soak them in hot water according to the directions in the package, and then you cut those into about two inch lengths with a knife or scissors. You take that egg, beat it in a large bowl, add noodles, pork, carrots, onions, fish sauce, pepper, and scallions. You mix them well. Soften those wrappers by dipping in warm water. Lay on a flat surface and put about two tablespoons of serving in the wrapper and roll. You roll them in the egg roll fashion, heat the oil over medium heat, and then you heat them for one minute. Cook about three of those rolls at a time until golden brown. That day, Diana also prepared a non-deep fried vegetarian version with bean sprouts, cucumbers, carrots, cilantro, mint, green onions, and lettuce. And boy, was that good. The tasting, of course, wasn't complete without a dip in side sauces, which included a peanut sauce, a fish sauce, and a sweet sauce. The result was a most unusual and delicious taste. Everything was completed in less than an hour. What a treat from the kitchen of Diana Erickson of Mayo, Michigan. Available to you now for your own adventure in Far Eastern cooking in Michigan Magazine's Family and Friends Cookbook number 3. Diana also has in the book more Vietnamese dishes like spiced beef with mint leaves on page 27, chicken with lemongrass and chili on page 29, 
and from Thailand, Green Curry at page 24. This cookbook is loaded with the unusual as well as traditional, thanks to people like Diana Erickson. Thanks, Diana, for being a delicious part of Michigan Magazine.